Okay, as I said, uh, we came back to thermal winds and pressure coordinates to see uh, the balance in the real world, in the real atmosphere, right? So what's in the real uh, world? We have uh, temperature uh, decreasing uh, to the uh, north uh, in the northern hemisphere, so dt dy is less than zero. Whereas in the south, we are going in the opposite direction. Uh, so it's going in the negative y direction. So dt dy is positive. So even though temperature decreases from the equator to the south pole, y is pointing in the uh, northern hemisphere direction. So the dt dy becomes greater than zero. But f is also a uh, flipping sign uh, in uh, the hemis across the equator. So 1 over f dt dy is uh, less than 0 in both hemispheres, which means from our uh, thermal wind relation, du dp, the geostrophic shear in the pressure coordinate, has to be less than 0 in both hemispheres. What is du BP, dp less than zero? If our z coordinate is going from the surface into the atmosphere, z is positive and uh, u is uh, increasing, but pressure is decreasing. So you have to get used to the idea that when you say pressure coordinate, while z increases, pressure decreases. Right? Sea level pressure is higher than pressure above uh, the surface. So du dp then becomes uh, less than zero. Remembering our uh, thermal wind equation in the pressure coordinate, du gdp dvg dp equals r over fp written in terms of dt dy and dt dx. This is why we're going through these little arguments here. But this allows us to look very uh, easily at the uh, uh, schematic of the westerly winds. Here we are at the equator, uh, warm light air, we have cold dense air, so you have uh, the uh, temperature surfaces dipping from the tropics to the higher latitudes and we said that slope increases with altitude, so U has to increase, so du dp du dp has to be uh, negative so you have to be able to adjust your z sense and your p sense so p pressure is increasing uh, decreasing so du dp uh, less than zero means u has to increase surely enough if you remember our uh, meridional uh, section of zonal mean zonal winds then you got jet streams at in the upper troposphere and velocity is zero at the surface. So, as uh, a large-scale balance, thermal winds uh, seem to be uh, working. The temperature gradient, pressure gradient, and the uh, geostrophic shear are all working in the atmosphere. We can then go back to our 500 millibar surface. We said uh, the contour intervals here are temperature contours. What did we say? We said temperature contours on pressure surfaces are contour streamlines of uh, geostrophic shear, right? As opposed to uh, the uh, height contours on pressure surfaces being streamlines of geostrophic flow. So you can see the same uh, exact thing here, June 21, uh, June 21. This is the 500 millibar uh, height and uh, geopotential, the 500 millibar winds and the geopotential height field, geopotential height field and uh, temperatures. Okay. So these are the con these are contour. These contours are the streamlines of the shear geostrophic shear DUGDP. Whereas here you have geostrophic currents or winds. We had our already talked about the details of the direction and the relation with the contours squeezing and uh, low pressure regions or low height over a constant pressure is uh, cyclonic flow and high pressure here um, anticyclonic flow. Okay? So why? Because Rossby number is not small here anymore. 
We have dropped the ROSB number mentioned for a while, but it hasn't gone away. We still have to have low ROSB numbers to have all these balances, geostrophic balance and uh, thermal wind balance. Okay, So look at this in terms of the temperature contours now. Here we are again looking at the winds. Uh, here is our vertical shear. Now this is going up into the uh, stratosphere, but uh, nonetheless uh, upper atmosphere is uh, obviously somewhere here. The tropopause is dipping and you have increasing uh, temperatures. Um, so U contours are shown in 5 meters per second and temperature is every 5 uh, degrees. What are we looking for? Basically the relation between temperature gradient and the vertical shear. So wherever the temperature gradients are uh, weak, the vertical shear is weak. Where the temperature gradients begin to get stronger as we go up in the atmosphere, wind shear gets stronger and you can see here uh, wind shear is the strongest where the thermal gradients are the strongest. Obviously once you go into the upper atmosphere you are uh, beyond the uh, <coughs> regime that we are uh, looking at. Okay, So that kind of relates our thermal wind balance to the real world and says that large-scale zonal winds are uh, essentially in thermal wind balance in terms of the slope of the isotherms from the equator to the pole and the vertical uh, change in the zonal winds or the shear in the pressure coordinate. Obviously it's also there in the Z coordinate but uh, to relate to the temperature we had to move to the pressure coordinate, right? Thermal wind balance works. That's it.